So what we have here is we have a man holding up a chain that is 52 feet long and is connected by supports that are 50 feet apart and the man is standing halfway in between them. Um, the chain weighs three pounds per foot and the man weighs 50 pounds. What we need to find is this height that he has to hold up the chain to keep all the chain off the ground and the force at that point what he exerts on the ground holding up that chain. So that's what we're going over in this video. If you want a video of me explaining how to solve for catenary loads and what all these equations come from, um, you can click on this video link. If you like this video, hit that like button and please subscribe. So the first thing we want to do is we want to identify what variables we do know and what variables we don't know and which equations we need to use to solve for that. So we have here that we have our 52 foot chain, but even though S is our um, length along the chain, we're going to set up our coordinate system like this, where this is our X direction, that's our Y direction, and then we have the length of the half of the cable going say from A to the man. So this distance is our distance C from the X axis to the cable at the lowest point A. And then we have our length along our um, cable, which is S starting from the Y axis. So S is going to equal 26 feet, which is half of the chain. So well, that's 26 feet. And then we have that X is 25 feet. So write that over here, X equals 25 feet. And then our weight per unit length of the chain, which is W naught, equals three pounds per foot. So we don't really have a variable to find the weight of the chain, but we do know that once he's pulling it up so it's all the way off the ground, the ground isn't going to be exerting any force on it. And then the reaction um, support connections here are only going to be pulling in the horizontal direction. So this man is going to be taking all the weight of the chain onto himself, meaning that the weight of the chain is just going to be its length times by its weight per unit length. So we have that our force F, let's write this in blue, we have that F equals the weight of the man, which is 150 pounds, plus the weight of the chain, which is 52 feet times by three pounds per foot. So three times by 52, and that gives you a total of 100 and, or not 100, 306 feet, 306 pounds. So F is 306 pounds. We'll just write that over here, 306 pounds. Now we need to solve for how high he needs to lift it up to get it all off the ground and for this to be true, for the, um, the force to be 306 pounds. That means we need to find H and so first we need to find C. So we'll use this equation that S equals C times that, the hyperbolic sine of X divided by C. Now this isn't an easy equation to solve because we can't just solve it for C and find out what it is. Um, we have to use an iterative process where we multiply C over to the other side and that equals the hyperbolic sine of x divided by c and then we just plug in values for c and try to get them close to each other so we'll say that this side 26 which is c or s divided by c we'll say that's on this side of the table and then we have our hyperbolic sine divided by our time of x which is 25 divided by C. Let me just plug in values for C. 
And so the let's just pick a number and start. Let's say C is 20. So 26 divided by 20 is 1.3. Hyperbolic sine of 25 divided by 20 is 1.6. 1.602 approximately. So that's pretty close. Um, we don't really know whether that C is too high or too low, so just have to keep going in another direction. We'll say that C is 30. When we plug that in, we get that 26 divided by 30 is approximately 0 0.867. And then the hyperbolic sine of 25 divided by 30 is 0 0.9332. So that did get us closer. You'll notice that um, these are this side is smaller than this side, so 1.3 is smaller than 1.6, and 0.8 is less than 0.9, so this side is smaller. And because it kept going that way, that means we're going in the right direction. C is going to be bigger than 30. So we'll just keep plugging in values um, for C and getting us closer and closer. But once these two once this side is greater than this side, then we know we've gone too far and you'll need to back up a little bit. But I'm not gonna go through the whole process in this video. I end up getting that C is about 51.5. And I would match these decimal places to about four or five decimal places to get accurate enough. But, so this is C um, approximately and then we can plug into this equation to find y. We have that y equals the square root of c squared, which is 51.5 squared plus c squared, which is 26 squared. And then, so we get that y equals 57.69 feet. And then to find h, it's just so y is just the distance from the x-axis up to um, where this man is holding it. And so h is just y minus c. And plug that in, 57.69 minus 51.5 equals 6.19 feet. So this man has to hold it up 6.19 feet above the ground to get the whole chain off the ground. So it's mostly just plugging into these equations and knowing how to use them, but it's not too complicated. Hope you found this helpful. If you did, hit that like button. If you have any questions or suggestions, you can leave them down in the comments and I will reply to them. Um, in the description, I've got a couple links to Amazon and Teespring. You can click on those to go and buy some merch from Student Engineering. And buying that helps me out a lot. So if you're new to this channel, my name is Preston Palmer, Student Engineering, and my goal is to help other engineering students like me better understand engineering. So if you found this video helpful, hit that like button, and please subscribe.